أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى أهل بيته وصحبه وموله We continue our glimpses into the glorious Quran and reflect tonight on two extracts from Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah is the second chapter in the chronological order of the Quran and it was revealed during the Medinian period of the Prophet's life while the Prophet وسلم, was stationed in the last 10 years of his life in the city of Medina Munawwara. Surah Baqarah is unique in that it is the longest surah in the Quran constituting of 286 verses. In other words, this surah constitutes one twelfth of the entire Quran. The Prophet وسلم, referred to Surah Al-Baqarah as Sanam Al-Quran, the peak of the Quran or the summit of the Quran. And furthermore, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in a hadith documented by Ibn Majah said, تَعَلَّمُوا سُورَةُ الْبَقْرَةِ وَآلَ عِمْرَانِ فَإِنَّهُمَا الزَّهْرَوَانِ يُظِلَّانِ صَاحِبَهُمَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كَأَنَّهُمَا غَمَامَتَانِ Learn the surah Al-Baqarah and Al Imran, for surely these are the two illuminated chapters. These are the two illuminated chapters that will shade its reciters like clouds on the day of judgment. At the outset, we are aware that Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar and is a month in celebration of the Quran. And Ramadan contains a most special night in the year commemorating that revelation of the Quran. Therefore, we find both the month Ramadan and the night of revelation, Laylatul Qadr, are specifically mentioned by name in the Holy Quran. We should realize that though the first thing that comes to one's mind when we mention Ramadan is siyam or fasting, the verse referring to Ramadan or the month of Ramadan actually relates Ramadan to the Quran. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. And it was revealed هُدَلْ لِلنَّاسِ as a source of eternal guidance for all of humanity for all time to come till the end of our time on earth. بِبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ It is a clarifying, distinguishing criteria for all humanity between right and between wrong. And then Allah says in that verse, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَالْيَصُمْ Whoever witnesses that month in which the Qur'an was revealed, person who witnesses that month should fast. Ramadan is therefore a month of the revelation of the Qur'an, for which fasting has been prescribed as a pillar among the five pillars of Islam. So let us now reflect on the verse dealing with with the prescription and the objective of siyam, of fasting in the month of Ramadan. And that verse reads, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattakoon. Fasting is one of the fundamental pillars of faith. Kutiba alaykum usiyam, prescribed on those who have faith. Kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum, and it, which has been prescribed before and has always been an integral part of religious traditions throughout history. Prophet Moses, David, Jesus, Elijah, Musa, Isa, Dawood, Ilyas, peace be upon all of them are known to have fasted. A believer, therefore, has been commanded in all of us as people of faith to fast the month of Ramadan, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And the objective of that fasting, that obligatory fast in Ramadan, the objective of it is attaining of taqwa. So we see Quran, Ramadan, Siyam, and taqwa. The occasion is revelation. The month of Ramadan, celebration of that revelation. Taqwa is the objective or the destination and the vehicle towards that destination is siyam or fasting. The objective of fasting is taqwa. And the term taqwa is a profound concept derived from the Arabic root word waqaya. Linguistically, it means self-protection, forbearance, caution, support, and abstinence. And terminologically, 
Taqwa implies devoutness, religiousness, piety, sincerity, God consciousness, and godliness. So siyam or fasting is a means to attain taqwa and is a mode of enhancing self-discipline. An opportunity for regulating positive attitude and for enhancing good conduct. For developing a better self. It is an opportunity for spiritual revitalization and increased generosity and philanthropy. And thus, fasting could be an effective means of pursuing piety or taqwa. Now, to chart the pathway to taqwa from an ethical and moral perspective, the activities of Ramadan that we engage in should make us contemplate the higher purpose of our lives and the deeper meaning of our existence, and thereby motivating us to try and live meaningful lives. Balancing fasting in the day with eating at night, working through the day with prayer through the night, balancing our physicality with our spirituality. And fasting, therefore, is a balance. It's an ideal arena for contemplation. It's an ideal arena for critical self-evaluation, for muhasaba. And it's ideal for embarking on a spiritual journey. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran refers in another verse to those who are fasting as as the transcendent travelers, the spiritual wayfarers. Are we indeed spiritual wayfarers, as on a transcendent journey towards the attainment of taqwa? Are we? Then let's scrutinize. Where is our journey of fasting through Ramadan taking us? Are we intending by our fast to become better human beings? Become more conscious, more conscientious, more considerate, more caring, more compassionate? Are we committing ourselves to journey from self-centeredness to social consciousness? From indifference towards empathy? From self-righteousness towards righteousness? Are we? Let's contemplate and reflect. So as we fast the fast of Ramadan in this month of the Quran, let us enhance our appreciation of Allah, the revealer of the Quran. Let us continue journeying towards a level of moral, social, ethical consciousness and spiritual elevation towards piety, towards taqwa. And remember, inna akramakum indallahi atqakum in the estimation of Allah, the pinnacle of human excellence, of human development, is the attainment of taqwa. May Allah grant us to be of the muttaqeen. Shukran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.